you can see I've got the, I've got this feeling that I like the office to be comfortable home-like space. <laughs> What I'll typically do is I'll, I'll show up in the morning. The sort of 8.30 to 5.30 period is dense. So Bioconjugate's a very broad journal. We have people all the way from pharmacology, clinical, through organic chemists that are making enabling tools for, for these other areas. What makes a good paper is a scientific contribution. If it's an article, has that, have they advanced science and have they shown how they advance science? We are currently doing somewhere around 800 papers a year. That's up about 20% from last year, so we're in a real boom phase. That's a long process when you go from the initial submission all the way through to when the paper is assigned and when the first reviews come out. We, we, do it, we do it pretty quickly by providing feedback at every step. We're able to keep the time from initial submission to online publication under 40 days. We will do some team teaching. We'll do some teaching mentoring as well. I think what I like most about mentoring the, the young scientists is helping them find out who they are. You really want them to find out who they were, who they, who they are, and how to get them best to where they want to be. This class has been going on for roughly 12 or 13 years, and it's, it's actually a fairly innovative one because it's a core course. It brings all of our graduate students, first year graduate students together. After relaxing for a few minutes, I'll go into lab because I'm not ready to focus in on something that's demanding like editing or paper writing or something right away. At the moment, we have 28 full-time researchers between visiting scholars, postdocs, and graduate students, and uh, we have 11 undergrads. We have engineers, we have biologists, we have synthetic chemists, we have physical chemists, we have all sorts of different people. There's two things that are coming outside of the lab right now that, I'm, that I think are really exciting. One is protein delivery, where we're able to take uh, proteins, deliver them right into the cytosol of the cell where, we, where they can then be directed wherever they want to go. The other side, we have a sensing project. We've developed a cell-based sensing platform that very rapidly allows us to look at both the efficacy of therapeutics and their mechanism. We can get answers in minutes, meaning we can take cells from the patient, put them, incubate them, and then figure out what therapeutic works best for that patient's cancer. So uh, my name is Ngoc Lee. Uh, I go by Ann Lee in this lab. And so for bioconjugate chemistry, we actually post several highlighted um, articles. We have a lot of um, nice feedback from the ACS journal and um, uh, we have a lot of likes on Facebook as well. So I think it's good to keep in contact with people and all of these new um, papers that are published daily. What you see with papers, is you, publications, is you see a snapshot, sort of an instantaneous distilled essence of what's, what's happened in one particular aspect. I really like bringing sort of the living, breathing nature of science out, and social media is a great place to do it. You know, it would be an extension of what we, of what we call the, the global cafe section of, uh, of the journal where we talk with people from around the world and ask them about, well, what's research like in you know, Botswana, what's research like in Pakistan? The more broadly we cast our net, the, the more people we're gonna interact with and the more people are gonna be able to interact with us. I leave, you know, 5.30 or so, and then with the exception of answering a few emails, I don't want to work then, I want that to be family time. I get to work with the associate editors, I get to work with Deirdre and people work in the social media and it's really a chance to sort of take a vision, a new vision for the journal. If you want to be an EIC, the best way to do it is first of all you get yourself a productive research program, then look for opportunities first to be on editorial advisory boards, then be associate editor, and then once you've learned that, then you're in an excellent position to be an editor-in-chief. <laughs>